Jesus, we come to you today so thankful for what you've already done this week. So thankful for what you did at Gap, for giving Pastor Kim that word, Lord. We thank you, and we come into agreement with what it says, Jesus. Hold it, yea, God. We thank you for what you're doing even in the church. You're releasing the song, God, and I'm, we're so excited for what you're doing. And so thankful that you birthed something in this church, God. I come before you, and I ask that you anoint Isaac from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, God. I just ask that his words be clear and coherent. God, let him speak your word, not his word. Lord, in the name of Jesus, speak through him, God, anoint his lips so when he speaks, the Holy Spirit pours out into our rooms wherever we are, God. Oh, Didier, we thank you for meeting us here today, and we thank you for what you're going to speak through Isaac and what you're going to do um, this awakening and this Sunday, God. We're so thankful, so thankful. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, Caitlin. Um. The title of this Devo is called Our, Our Responsibility. Now, hopefully it doesn't sound like a mess, but this Devo is kind of one of those things where I try to cram so much into one word when honestly, I can probably separate this into three whole different Devos, but I'm gonna try my best. Now, today I'm gonna be talking about our, our responsibility. I got this message ever since Sunday when Pastor Paul preached about going into a new dimension and our authority that we all have. Ever since this, I've been praying about this. And whenever I go into my secret place or my secret time, the Lord has been talking to me about the mantle that we all have and also our responsibility that we have. Now, as we all know, each and every single one of us has, has been tested and some of us has even been getting attacked recently. Some personally and others with their family members. Now, personally, I can open up and say that I've been getting attacked personally for about a couple months now countless sleepless nights due to demonic dreams and spiritual warfare, days with no peace. And I would always ask the question, why is God not helping me out? I mean, I was getting in my secret place once a day and I was reading my Bible and I would worship my heart out. So I thought that I was doing my part. Every night that I wouldn't get any sleep, I would lay on my floor praying for hours for peace, asking the Lord to help me out. But recently he spoke to me. Yes, we need to go to him when we are in need. But we also, but we ourselves also have a responsibility. He said to me, did you not forget the authority that you have? Did you forget the power and gifts I have granted with you? For in Luke 10, 19, he said, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. You see, it's easy to become distracted when the enemy starts to whisper in your ear and make you feel like you've already lost. The goal of the enemy is to manipulate you, install fear, install fear into your head and make you believe something that's not even real you see the devil has a the devil has power but he does not have authority all authority is given to our spirit who christ works through the spirit will try to make you think that you have a spirit in you or that you never that you can never have salvation or that no matter how hard you try it will never be enough but you see it says as long as we stand guard and we are in our word and we give ourselves completely to god then no weapon formed against us shall prosper I see a lot of time people asking for prayer and for help and wondering why things aren't moving and changing. And it's because you have to ask yourself, what are you doing for yourself? You can't just leave it up all to the Lord to do all the work. You can't leave it up all to the church to do the praying. No, you need to get on your knees and battle it out. And that's what my problem was. I got comfortable with having a secret place once a day and only reading my Bible once a day. And I thought that was enough. But the Lord was leaving it up to me to figure it out and to see how bad I wanted it, to see how bad I wanted to change and how bad I wanted to drive out what those negative spirits were coming against. Like Pastor Tony said, the Lord is going to continue to give you the same test over and over again until you pass it, until the message that he is trying to get to you is received. I had to start getting into my secret place more than just once a day. I had to start reading my Bible more than just once a day. 
because at the end of the day, this was a battle and it came down to how bad I wanted to win it. Yes, it says the battle has already been won, but that is no excuse to leave it all to God to do all the work. Because if that was the case, he wouldn't have created the church. He wouldn't have called us to be his army. He created each and every single one of us to carry the authority over the enemy. And that's why the enemy is always trying to whisper lies into our mind. Because once we, once he gets a hold of our mind, he gets a hold of our hearts and strongholds can start to form. That's why it's our responsibility. It's our responsibility and our job to get into our secret place as much as we can every single day and also get into our word. We need to start surrounding ourselves with his presence as much as we can, more than any TV show or any games or sports, because we are making not only religion mad, but the enemy's whole kingdom. And if you think you aren't going to get pushed back for that, then you're in a rough time. Don't forget that the power that has got, don't forget the power that God has given you. Don't forget that you are a child of God and he has given you the power and the authority to overcome the attacks of the enemy. The battle is just going to keep getting more and more intense. That's why it's time to get serious. Yes, have fun. And yes, have fun. But stay on the wall. If you are doing stuff that's not bettering your testimony, then why are you doing it? If you're putting in more hours in a Netflix show than in your Bible, I ask you why. God will never forsake you nor leave you. But again, he's not going to fight your battle with you if you're not putting your part in. We are called and made to be warriors. We have authority to command legions of angels. When we pray and ask for angels to protect our family and our friends while they sleep or while they travel, they are responding to the authority of our voice. Our voice is a powerful weapon. Even if you're a quiet person, God can still use your voice. Take it for someone who was really quiet. But we have to learn not to limit ourselves and ask God to use us in ways that we never thought he could. Because the power behind the cry is much more powerful than we think. The thought of how deep our cry goes and how our sound goes. I want the Lord to hear our cry. Hear how desperate we are for his presence and for his love. Not only that, but I want the cry to shake the gates, the gates of hell and for the devil to hear that we are coming for him full force and that the ecclesia is not rising only in America, but in the nations of the world. It is our responsibility to be equipped not only with the arm of God each day, but also equip us with the word, prayer, fasting, and giving ourselves all to the Lord. He's looking at how serious we take it. Because it's good to have fun, but when it comes to worship or prayer or our secret time, those stuff should be taken with much more seriousness. Again, we hear it all the time, but what is taking up your time? What is taking up your attention? We should want it to be all about God. It should be a passion, a thirst, and a hunger. Just like how we strive at a sport that we really like, or an instrument we learn, or anything we do with a passion. Our relationship and our duty with the Lord should be like that, if not even greater and stronger. The mantle we are created to carry as a church and personally is much more, it's so much more important and so mandatory that we have to prepare, we have to prepare ourselves not only for the attacks that come against us, but also the attacks that come against the church. Now, there are so much more authority that comes behind our voice. You have to start surrounding yourselves with what is coming out of your mouth each and every single day. What are you saying to yourselves in your head? Or what are you saying to your friends? Or what are you saying to your loved ones? Because the power behind life or death lies within our tongue. We hear that all the time in the Bible. We hear that all the time from Pastor Kim and Pastor Paul. Yes, we might say it's a joke, but it's a speaking life or death. We need to take the seriousness in that. Because once we start letting those minor jokes affect our minds, then we're going to slowly start believing in it. We... It proves it all the time. The more you say something to yourself, the more your mind is going to start to believe it. So what are you saying to yourself? Are you speaking power and life over yourself? Because the enemy is going to always try to whisper lies into your head. He's going to try to manipulate you all the time. But once we know your authority, once you know the authority that you have and the power that lies within your body and your soul and what the God has given you, then you are going to scare any demon, any spirit that tries to come against you. When you walk in your room or when you walk into any place, you should want those spirits and those demons to flee. Why? Because as soon as you walk in the room, the devil should be like, oh, he's here or oh, she's here. That's why every single time we see Pastor Kim up on that stage, what is she doing? She's interrogating and she's always 
she's always going after the devil because she knows the authority God has given her. She's not scared of him. She's not intimidated by him. In fact, she's intimidating him. Why? Because uh, the power of Christ works through us. So be careful on what you say. Be careful on what you speak and what comes out of your might, what comes out of your mouth, what you think in your mind, because there is so much more power behind it. And again, it is our responsibility to take up the mantle and to get in our secret place, to get into prayer and to get into our Bible, not just once a day because, oh, it's just another thing off of our bucket list or it's just another thing off of our schedule because we should want more. How can we prepare? How can we expect to win a battle that we're not prepared for? With that, I'll close. Lord, we ask you, we ask you, Lord, to just download content into our mind each and every single day, Lord. Fill us with your, with your wisdom, Lord. Fill us with your guidance. We want you to over, just to overcome, Lord. We give you the, con- the countless amounts of messages that you give us, Lord, through our pastors, through Gap, Lord, and even through our devos, Lord. I ask that we do not take our devo times just as something, again, on our schedule or something lightly, but we take it, Lord. We take it. As serious, Lord. For these are not our words, but your words, Lord, that are being downloaded, Lord. And we know that you are rising up, you are raising up an army, Lord, and we prepare ourselves and we give ourselves all to your kingdom, Lord, and all to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, and we ask that we carry this not on today, Lord, but through this week, Lord, and through the days to come, Lord. And we, Lord, we come with expectancy that any attack formed against us, our church, or our families, or our friends, Lord, we expect not only you to come through but we expect ourselves to come through as well lord and we thank you for what you've given us in the name of jesus amen hey guys hope you enjoyed that video be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel if you want to stay tuned in for more be sure to hit that notification bell and also follow us on instagram on shaken underscore vessels that's all we have for today thank you